please, before you sit down, greet uh, two or three people. Tell those that are behind you, come and sit next to me. Come and sit next to me. Come, 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 come. Occupy first row, second row, and that will be good by us. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, musicians. May God bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Hey, who should go to Abazalon in church? Abazalon is by Spusi Soga Cool. Right, we begin so that we can cover as much and make sure we leave by 7.30. Right. Introducing the declaration on backsliding, this is what we have covered. The question itself, what is backsliding? We give you several definitions of the word or the meaning of backsliding. Then we went on to deal with signs of backsliding. From there, we talked about causes of backsliding. And then we went on to talk about results and consequences of backsliding. And now we are talking about the cure or remedy of backsliding. And that's what we started on, on Sunday. Jeremiah 3, 22, we read, Return. Jeremiah, we are now dealing with remedy of backsliding or the cure or remedy for backsliding. Jeremiah 3, 22. I will continue to read. Return, to, return you backsliding children and I will heal your backslidings. Do shh. For you are the Lord our God truly in vain is salvation hoped for. We say to you on Sunday that God is forever married to a backslider. He longs that you and I turn back and that we get to have an intimate relationship with him. And therefore, like the father took the prodigal son, he looks forward to a rich intimate relationship with us and therefore he can't give up on us we say there are several remedies of backsliding i will just pick a few today here we started by saying number one great self-assessment if one can assess themselves look at themselves inwardly and look at everything about them and look at their shortcomings and endeavor to confess them before God, God will help us in a special way. Yeah. If we deceive ourselves and think everything is all right, then we find ourselves missing the point. I say to you, that's why when I'm praying, especially self assessing prayers, I want to be alone and I don't want anybody around me. Just in case you are opening your heart and there's some fool around you who says, ah! So you want to open your heart freely and tell God who you are. So whenever you come before God and you are dealing with this prayer of self-assessment, please make sure you normally do it alone. That way you sense the freedom of telling God all your weaknesses that may be in you. How many are able to pray such prayers and tell God their weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Don't tell them you are strong. Mm -hmm. Don't say your word says, and therefore with God, you know. Tell him exactly who you are. That way he will help you and assist you. So great self-assessment as you face yourself who you are and where you are and therefore God is able 
to help you in a special way. Romans 2 verse 4. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suf suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God always leads to that powerful word there, uh, repentance. Yeah, it is God, therefore, through his goodness that guides us and leads us to this area called repentance. Number two, we say it get right with God. This is another remedy for backsliding or off backsliding. Okay, a fixed determination to get right with God and with our fellow man at any cost. Don't hold any grudges with anybody in the church, outside, in your families. I know daughters-in-laws and mothers-in-laws, there is an eternal feud there. They are always fighting up to a point where sometimes daughters-in-laws call their mothers-in-laws witches. When you go like that, such feuds are generational. If you don't deal with them, you as a Christian, you will miss it big time. And you will find that your life will always be curtailed one way or the other, or limited in some spheres because you have not dealt with relationships. Never be found in a point or position where you are not talking to someone in church because you think they have an attitude or you have an attitude. Never entertain that. Make sure you are always dealing with heart issues. The people that you think have annoyed you or hurt you, try by all means and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to walk in forgiveness. Say amen. I practice these principles, by the way. That's why I preach about them. I will never, never be a slave to someone in the sense that I can't forgive. Never. Look, I'm a preacher. I'm holding a mic. I may abuse the microphone if I keep grudges. You understand that? And therefore, I must hold a microphone with purity so that whatever I say here is not said to target someone. But if you feel targeted, you know it's the Holy Spirit hitting you. Mm -hmm. Say amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of us should be like that. Mm -hmm. Please forgive your fellow men and embrace your fellow men. And love, it takes a lot of effort to have a grudge. Lots of effort. Psychologists will tell us today that there is more effort in frowning than in laughing. And therefore, why carry a grudge? Please look at your neighbor and say, Jengawe, I forgive you in advance. You will always make a mess. I know spouses that have grudges against each other. They are not talking at home, but when they come to church, they pretend that all is well. Mm -hmm. That does not help you help. So forgive each other, love each other. Life is short. We have only 70 to 90 years in life. And by God's blessing, 100 years. So it's very short. Remember, you were two years old a few years ago. But you are no longer two years old now. Mm. Some are 40, some are 50. Why waste time holding a grudge against someone? Hey, why not greet them and embrace them and and love your fellow men. They may not be your best friend. Whereby you tell them all your secrets. But at least have a free heart towards them. Say amen. Why did you practice right now with your neighbor and say, Nyagutanda. I love you with all my heart. Hey, that one is being hugged there. <laughs> Just love the person. Hey, why, why create a mafia and have a gangster and say, let's attack? Ah, I couldn't church. How for the mafia? I'm the Italy. We were the mafia. But in church, we strive to love one another. Say, Amen. We love to bless one another. We love to wish, wish, wish each other well. Amen. When I see you, I want to see you prospering. When you are doing well, it's like I am doing well. When you are full of joy, it's like I am full of joy. 
when you are parking your new car there outside, it's like, it's my car too. <laughs> I have prayed for cars outside there. All manner of cars. It's just like petrol, it's just like petrol, but I have prayed. <laughs> I pray that you wish someone well. Say amen. Hallelujah. So never hold a grudge. And therefore, when you are like that, a strong determination to get right with God and with your fellow man, especially your fellow man. fellow man, But love them anyway. Say hallelujah. Number three, look to the Lord for consolation. Look to Jesus for deliverance, for comfort. For he says he is forever married to a backslider. We read Hosea 11 verse 8. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Adama? How can I set you like Zeboam? My heart churns within me. My sympathy is stead. It is God saying these words to someone who's drifting away from him. He says, I love you, I love you, I love you. How many have been in love? Yeah, lift up your hand in the natural. Let me say in love. How many have been in love? You know how it is when you're in love? Mm. Butterflies in your heart. Yeah! You can't stop thinking about that person. Even if that person is not thinking about you, you are thinking about them. Yeah, you love them. When they call you, you feel like, oh my God, this conversation. Says, Lord, that what can you in love? We are long as his Lord, don't worry. When you are in love, remember, Baba Toriro, the day Theo said, Yes, I agree. Hey, hey, and that's what God. Even you, even food, you don't want to eat food. Hey, I am sure it happened to Brigadier here. The day this lady said yes. I wish I was Paul today to ask, how did he propose? <laughs> what did he? No, but I didn't want to break it here. all you know, of one point, I just thought to give you this. This is pretty. What's up, Asas? This is pretty. What did Liatada ran who's all this story. Missy Mike, Missy Mike, Massian. Just one sentence, Princess Simakona. I see Pampi. But were you expecting it? No, you were not expecting it. Hey, so what teen? I'm a footalawa, I think. What teen? intercession. it's like an angel. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> How about lunch? Oh, <laughs> after so, saying those words. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. What do you know? But I mean, I thought what we were going to discuss uh, service issues. Oh. I have never seen this man. Angelic work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I uh -huh. so I thought we were discussing service issues. <laughs> Let me tell you, Minister Joy, as 
scheme would in a hamba and go get a baggy trick suit. Wow, what's a booze would ah? That is who you go get tricks to take. What was a loser? What to have any pelangamba? I want to give you a baby. We have a cogis get his fichan if ever I will look at it. Then I thought, ah, I'm fundis got to sit in. Hey. I but was a vega in the back of yes, what are you asking? I can get on my own game. I own Gamacha Chunga eight hundred. Eh, Gakofan and a lady. Ah, take a video. No, my son, I take a video. What you are going on, man, can get on Mamma won't give my church a eight hundred. Agula of an allow. That's issues of love. And God says in His word, I am forever married to a backslider. In other words, He loves you with all His heart. If ever, Sis Lolo, you have never been loved. There is one man that loves you, and his name is Jesus Christ. Yeah, he will never let you down. He loves you completely. Say amen. Landing above Mama Willing at Tandois in Tinsen, which is your hand. Landing the name of boyfriend, and if only you, which is your hand. As a minute, three or four weeks, we are going to Jesus is the dad. You are not going to see him be comforted. Can you look at him? Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Hey. Let's read Jeremiah 3, verse 11 to 15. Then the Lord said to me, Backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous children. Say, who can't tell you, Peter? We have one language, let's say, in song, ma, um, pregate, yama, to us. Nans, konab. Say, katani, salapuches. Hmm. Would really, I love Israel more than Judah. Hmm. Hey. Jongo, baba, lo, noati, ama, chetu, oon, ke, la, wa, eh, harvest, thousand, eight hundred. Agula, ofana, la, la, la. How can I Wait, I will tell you, sis, you know, who can I call? Who can I call? Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return. Say it with me. Say, Return. Backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you. For I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Say amen. We touch on number four. We are talking of cures and remedies for backsliding. Resist discouragement. The house of God is a place to come to when you are discouraged. I have heard many people judge harshly the house of God. Tell him a Christian pretend I. Bako na yevo njegi spethi la swanki. Abakula kulu. Uwe tulabani. But in church you find good people. Good people. Once you begin to judge the church of God harshly. God will deal with you. Yeah. Know how far to go with someone's wife. Because the church is God's wife. You understand that? So when you are crossing certain lines, certain lines that you are crossing, I told a certain lady, I can only in moderation talk about my church, but you don't talk about my church. Don't join me when I say HQ. HQ. <laughs> With all our, why would I be standing here every Tuesday and Sunday if I didn't love these people? Because you can't minister effectively to a people that you don't like. 
Yeah, God can give you those people if you don't like them. But as once you spend time praying for them, embracing them, missing them, loving them, God says, now you are a pastor. Mm. While in my calling, I'm an apostolic person. I am a pastor as I stand here Sunday morning and Tuesday evening. Say amen. I hope as I pin their foot. If you didn't eat meat, I encourage you next time they put another bride. Stay put and make sure you participate. Say amen. So resist all forms of discouragement. And that's a remedy. Don't yield to it. If you're feeling low, come to the house of God. David the Sami says, I was glad. When they said, let us go into the house of God. It's an amazing thing when you come to the house of God. That you can meet a realm way that will change your life. That will stop you from killing yourself. Destroying yourself. Taking your life. And certain things are adjusted by the spirit of God. When you come into the house of God. Luke 18 verse 1 says. Then he spoke a parable to them. That men always ought to pray. And some versions say, not give up. That version says, not lose heart. Don't give up. Resist the temptation to yield to discouragement. Don't be discouraged. Yeah, in the house of God, God can lift you up and change your life. We found wives in the house of God. You found spouses in the house of God. But still you found somebody. In the house of God. Say amen. The church of God has everything. And I pray that you'll be satisfied with this living God. Psalm 43 verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. Say it with me. Hope in who? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him. Why? He is the help of my countenance, and he is indeed my God. Hope in God. God will sustain you and take you over and never under. Discouragement, therefore, is deadly. If you entertain it, it will send you to an early grave. So you resist that. Number five, sorrow for sin. This is another remedy to cultivate a feeling of constant sorrow for sin. When we fail, let it be that you are sorrowful with that and that you want to change. Is that not so? How many desire to move from one degree of glory to another? Yeah, it is therefore to confess and therefore the power of confession. Many people think, why should I confess? Why? It then reconnects you to God when you sin and when I sin. This is the principle that Jesus referred to when he said to those who had much, much will be forgiven of them, or rather they will love much. Listen to this. Luke 7, verse 36 to 50. Let read this portion of scripture today. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house. Look at where Jesus is found. Pharisee's house. And sat down to eat. Verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner. Who was a what? When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, in the Pharisee's house, brought a box, an alabaster box, or flask of fragrant oil. Verse 38. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash with his feet, or to begin to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Something that is happening here. This woman is known to be the prostitute of the city. She approaches the most purest of people, Jesus. And what she does there is shocking those people who are sitting around the table. 
I don't know if someone did this and you were sitting with Babu Kudo and that lady came in and did this. <laughs> so now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. So the woman was touching Jesus. Hmm. <laughs> Verse 40. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. Verse 41 begins the lesson. There was a certain creditor. I love the way Jesus Christ will put parables. He goes north when he wants to go south. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Verse 42. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, jailer. Therefore, which of them would love more? Verse 43. Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Verse 43, 44. He then turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. Verse 45. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. Verse 46. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Verse 47. Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves in a small way. Ladies and gentlemen, the principle is very clear here. If you and I know where we are coming from, we will not judge others harshly. We are what we do. Do you know where you are coming from? Mm. Just to know who you were before God picked you up. Mm. We will endeavor to lift others up when they are in a pit and not kill them. One man said, Christian soldiers are the only ones that kill their fellow men when they are wounded. Hmm. What happened to Bara here with you guys surrounding him here was high level of love. Is that not so? Hmm. That's what the world needs when they are coming to church. They need someone who will embrace them and someone who will not judge them. Because already you are judged by the world. When you walk in here, you want to find someone that will embrace you. And in embracing you, you feel the warmth of the love of God. Say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you are really special. Mm. Say to them again, say you are really special. So there is a lady of the night. This is a prostitute. She walks <laughs> into a home of Pharisees. Just walking where Pharisees are already they're judging you. You are never supposed to do that with the Pharisees. Later on being a loose woman. Being a lady of the night. I don't know what type of dress she was wearing. Mm, because she was the lady of the night. 
I don't know what type of hair. I don't know what type of man she had had overnight. Mm -hmm. But she walks to Jesus. Because she walks but not so with Jesus Christ. I love the way Jesus Christ went about ministering to people. This lady is totally ministered to. Can you imagine <laughs> this lady was in a way wayward? Hmm. A normal preacher will say, hey, stop it. I'm a man of God. Why are you doing this? Not so with Jesus Christ. There's a certain preacher in the USA who overheard he was having a coffee in a, it's not a restaurant. It's a busy place where people pass by. And he happened to enter in there. And also, he noticed that there were truckers outside. And therefore, where there were truckers, a pit stop for truckers, you will find prostitutes there. So these three prostitutes were talking and saying, our friend prostitute is coming. But it's her birthday. We have not done anything for her. They were talking. You know, life of prostitution is a very lonely life. <laughs> so this preacher is sitting and overhearing these ladies talking about their friend who is a prostitute whose birthday was on that same day. This preacher overheard that and quickly moved next uh, uh, super eight and bought a big cake and brought it quickly. Mm -hmm. He wanted to minister. And when he brought the cake, they were waiting and suddenly their friend appears. Mm -hmm. And they're happy with their happy birthday and the preacher takes out the cake. And he says, I overheard your friends talking about you and here is the cake. The lady cried and cried. She had never been loved that way. Yeah. And cried and the men reached out to all of them and they gave their lives to Christ. We have one of the Pharisees we could have, they could have judged that lady, but he decided to reach down. How many people do we meet and they are unlovable? Yeah, they don't look the part. They are not dressed the right way we know to dress. That's why in churches, be careful before you talk about how people dress. They may be new people. It's all right to tell veterans to dress properly. But new people, they don't know that. They don't want to be told that. Because the world is judging them. When they come into the house of God, they need to find someone who will embrace them and love them in the name of Jesus Christ. It's called A-level Christianity. Say amen. So there is Jesus doing something extraordinary here. And many a times in churches we have people that walk in and they don't smell right. What do you do? Do you stand up and never come back? Or do you embrace them? Or do you see an opportunity of sowing something? Saying there is a need there. Instead of judgment in Instead of saying there is a need there, let me meet that need. And when you do meet that need, I tell you, when you give someone something where you are not expecting them to give you back anything, it is God himself who comes into that situation and then begins to bless you in a special way. I urge you to practice this. Plant where there is no possibility that that person will give you something. And then you are creating room 
for God to come into your life and into your situation. Say amen. Yeah. Let's read them. Finish this. 48. Therefore I say, then he said to her, your sins are forgiven you. Verse 49. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And verse 50, I believe, is the last verse. Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. What a scripture. What a demonstration of true love of God right there in Jesus' name. This woman was showing her sorrow for sin, abandoning herself to God, and God reached out to her in Jesus' name. Say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the gospel is amazing. Number six, self-denial. Self-denial. This is another remedy for backsliding. This very essence of all spiritual victories when you deny yourself. Because it's a battle that we must win at all costs. Say amen. The highest degree of spiritual strength is reached through fasting, abstinence, self-denial, in the bodily appetite, in mental pleasures, in social ease, and of all worldly gratifications. When you decide, yes, inyamiyas funalezi into. Ngoba na bale inyama la pamsi santi. Ai perangkalu kuboni santi. Lava bale inyama. Katapa nyali ra inyama. There are many things that our flesh wants. Is that not so? Hmm. Is it easy to say no to the flesh? Hmm? Is it easy? Is it easy to say no to the flesh? Sis Lolo, is it easy? Mfundiswam, hmm. is it easy to say no? Sis Maro, is it easy to say no to the flesh? Baba Matiwas, Uli Soja, is it easy? Hmm. <laughs> This is another remedy to cure backsliding. When we can say no, fasting is one of those ways. Because when you are fasting, your flesh screams. The day you decide to fast, Mama Jews was in Salim and Alisa. Okasuba did Tarusada, he last million tampam for tomorrow. So this year you conquered. Sure. I'm telling microphones. How did you conquer, Mamji? Mm. Uh, at first it wasn't easy, Bishop. It wasn't easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when I wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. that was around six. <laughs> but Except sometimes I'm going fast. Uh, I mean, I mm -hmm. But uh, the day you sit I'm fasting, mm -hmm. yeah. So it, right. it wasn't easy. It was I easy. struggled. Yeah. And around was, was it your first time to go for a fast of you yes. went for seven yes. days, five days? Five after, days. Five days. Yes. Uh-huh. How yes. did you feel? Uh at, at the end. At the end. Uh, it was good. Yeah. I think in your message. Yeah, but yes. initially, how did you feel? Uh, it was good. And you Kalisa it was bad. It, uh, I felt sick. You felt sick. Yes. Oh cook. Gang cook up shop. Yes. Hey, when in your mood, Jen? Hey, very you have never fasted in your life. Mm. Ask your neighbor, have you ever fasted ever since? Hmm? Can I see? I know fast is a private thing. How many have fasted over three days? Gone over three days. Wow. How many have gone over five days? Wow. I understand this was the one. How many have gone over 10 days? Wow. How many have gone over 15 days? Wow. 
How many have gone over 21 days? Wow. How many have gone over 30 days? Wow. How many have gone over 35 days? Wow. 35 days? How many have gone over 40 days? Huh? How many have gone over 50 days? How? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many have gone over 60 days? Hmm? I see that hand that big in these hands. How many have gone over 70 days? There. Joy, Joy went over 90 days. How many? Yeah, Joy was 90 days. Joy finished uh, some few weeks. How many have gone over 90 days? What's that? This is Joy. You can only 90 days. Hey, you serious? Why is it for 12 purposes? One, spirituality. Two, I'm a foot. Hmm. <laughs> so it's not easy when you are dealing with the flesh because the flesh has a voice it will scream it will demand it will tell you it will dominate you and terrorize you in fact you will find that most people are generous when you are fasting they want to buy you things yeah, because that's where the temptation comes but should you resist and stand firm, you will find that one of the things that will lift you higher than many other things is the ministry of prayer and fasting. It will change your life. But you must do it right. Make sure you're drinking water and make sure that you are hydrated. Otherwise, you will suffer from dehydration. Number seven, the deep resolve to be always industrious. This is one of the key remedies to avoid backsliding. Don't entertain laziness. When you are lazy, like the English language will say, a lazy mind is the devil's workshop. The enemy will attack you when you are sitting and you have nothing to do. So make sure you are industrious. That's a vice, therefore, in our lives. That is laziness, laziness, laziness. Please look at your neighbor and say, I hope you are not lazy. Never be unemployed. In other words, don't find yourself with many hours doing nothing. Many hours just doing nothing. Find something to do. Occupy your mind, your hands, your feet. That way, the enemy does not come into your life to begin to plant seeds in your life. Many murderers, you will find that they have plenty of time to think about murder. They begin to plan and plot who to kill because you have much time. But make sure you are always industrious, working and doing something with the mind that God has given you. John Wesley says, never be unemployed. He knew about that. He knew the vices that the enemy will bring if you have nothing to do. So laziness is not a blessing, my brothers and sisters. We must not only be industrious, but be so, so, in, so spiritual in the things of God so that we allow the grace of God to shine over our lives. Number eight, perseverance. Perseverance will help us. The ability to say, even though I am down, I will arise. Persevere. Touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, persevere. Hmm. So perseverance is the spiritual backbone of life itself. If you persevere and refuse to give up, Many people give up. Ah, I prayed. There was no answer. I prayed. It's been two months. The answer is in come. Persevere. Touch your shoulder, neighbor's shoulder and say, persevere, persevere. Don't give up. Luke 18, verse 1, we read the scripture. Then he spoke a parable to them. That man always ought to pray and not lose heart. Losing heart 
will cause us to be defeated. Persevere. Micah 7, verse 7 to 9, it reads, Therefore I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. There is the word there. I will wait. God specializes in teaching us to wait. Even as I thought it, that one says, they that wait upon the Lord, please wait. Touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, man, wait. Today our life is, lives are on a fast lane. Everybody is moving fast. Except God who says, wait. When you learn to wait in God, oh, you will be a spiritual giant. Verse 8 goes on to say, Do not rejoice over me, my enemy, when I fall. I will arise as perseverance there. When I sit in the darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. So when you are down, please, don't stay down there. Let God lift you up. Let God pick you up. Stand up and fight. Tomorrow you will win. Say amen. Talk to your neighbor and say, I'm going to go to the church. it's my turn. Yeah. Number nine, our thoughts. Keep the mind stayed in God and the things of his kingdom. The mind. If we can harness, harness our minds uh, to the word of God, to the things of God, we have gone far. Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So scripture therefore states that there is a correlation between your mind staying in him and the peace of God that he grants to you. So there is a linkage there and that's a powerful linkage right there. Trust in the Lord, verse 4, forever. Uh, for in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. Psalm 1, verses 1 to 6. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates. In his law, he meditates. In his law, he meditates. In his law, he meditates when and how he meditates day and night. When you don't allow your mind to wander far away, keep it focused, you will find that God will bring you back to his ways. Nothing can be more dangerous than wandering thoughts. When you allow your thoughts to wander, uh -huh. For the past 45 minutes, what did you think of which is not edifying? I hope they can give you a proper answer. What did you think of which was not edifying? Mm -hmm. Past 45 minutes. Sure. What about you, Lolo? 45 minutes. Uh, yeah. 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 What about you, Sis G? G, you pass 45 minutes. What about pass 45 minutes? Eh? Good. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, Pastor G. Pass 45 minutes. Did your mind ever stray in the past 45 minutes? And in my before, many people are talking bishop. Nyat. Tell them what bishop they will be. 45 minutes? No, I didn't think of any. You didn't think of any? What do you mean, babies? Oh, your kids. Yeah. Sharon, 45 minutes? Was everything holy? Uh -huh. 45 minutes? Nothing weird. 45 minutes? 
Huh? Nothing. Hmm? Four five minutes. <laughs> Bring it here, 45 minutes. Maro, 45 minutes. <laughs> KK, 45 minutes. Hmm? You thought about something. What's up? Well, nothing wrong. 45 minutes. Tell you 45 minutes. Me, you are holy. Bed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Nothing can be more dangerous than sinful wandering of the thoughts. Thoughts. Listen to what Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2, verse 5 to 12. Let this mind, say it with me, let what? This mind. Be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Verse 6. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant, and coming in the likeness of man. Verse 8. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Is it easy to humble oneself, do you think? Mm. It's not easy. It's an effort that you must employ. And Apostle Paul says, I buffet my body. Mm. To always think, you know what? I can think highly of myself and behave that way, but I choose not to. It takes a lot of effort. Many people that you consider humble are not humble, really. They have been humbled by circumstances. Even your neighbor, they will tell you, hey, once to humble. Allow them to have money, and you will see the true nature of that person there next to you. Please touch your, their shoulder and say, I was when you to the day you have money, money is always an amplifier. It will amplify the good and the bad that is in you. And many broke people appear humble. Don't be deceived. The day they have money, was I true nature. I am not sure if I have money. I broke. If I gave you a million U.S. dollars each year, you will see changes in behavior. Mm, changes in behavior. <laughs> That's really not your nature. Money is always an amplifier. Mm. Once you have it, it will show us your nature. If you see a millionaire coming to church sitting down, you know the person is humble. A poor person, you may not know. They may be humble. They may not be humble. But you never know. <laughs> Please look at you and say, I don't really know you until you have money. I don't really know you. Mm. So, one million dollars here? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> How many think that if they had three million dollars, their characteristic may change? Lift up your hand if you're like that. Uh -huh. you, are, you are being honest. Hmm. How many, let me put it, let me phrase it the other way around. How many think that if they have three million dollars, U.S. dollars, they will remain the way they are looking humble. Yes, sir, Linger. Who says no muti and I was la putting about a three million dollars? Cast trust to tell about a three million dollars civil. You will not change. 
Baba Toru, you will not change. Three million dollars, Bishop George. Yeah? Say three million US dollars. Utin. Uti has a change. Utin Jeb. But every inch. Who went on your well again? Aye, aye, aye. No, no, no. This is the other one. Tell him seven already. Now it's. You can't you can leave here. How many kids? I say, I say it's seven. <laughs> no, she will remain that way. No, never. She will never change. May God help us, please. May God help us to tell him that, Lord, no matter how you bless me, I will not change. I will remain loving you. I will remain focused. I will remain looking for you. I have seen many people walk into the house of God with nothing. When God empowers them, they change. They never come to church. They came to church because they were just broke. They were looking for things. And they were not looking for God. If God is to bless you and I, it's a covenant that you and I must make. Lord, no matter how much you bless me, I will still love you. I will still save you. I will never run away from you. When you make such a covenant, God will bless you with resources as never before. Stand up with me. Stand. Stand. Here is the son of God who created the universe. He humbled himself to the point of hanging on the cross. On the cross. Being crucified by his own creation. He had power to simply say, angels, smite them. True humility is when you have authority to harm someone and you choose not to. Uh-huh. True humility is when you have resources enough to really show off but choose not to. Yeah, that's power. True humility is authority and power restrained. Mm. When you know you have power, you have authority, but you restrain yourself. That's why you find politicians when they are campaigning, they are at their highest form of humility. The moment you elect them, they change. Yeah. All over, they are hugging, they are listening to you and so forth. But the moment they have authority, they change. They were not humble. They were just looking for something. I pray that you and I will tell God, Lord, no matter how you bless me, I will never change towards you. I will remain the same. That is a way of coming back to God. When you can tell him, bless me, Lord, as much as you want. Trust me. I will always fall at your feet. I will always cry to you. I have seen being a preacher for many years, people evolve as God blessed them. You think, what? This is a person that was like that. But look at them now. They have changed. God has no problem in blessing you and me. May those blessings never change us. May we remain approachable. May we remain loving each other. May we remain loving the people of God. May we remain embracing the people of God. If God will bless you tomorrow, please remain loving the people of God. And God has no problem. He is looking for such type of people that he can count on to say, once I bless you, you will never change. But I have a name by change. I change. So it was not an Just four suits searching chili. Oh, by I'm a suit among four. The person has changed. Yeah, just four suits. Hmm. Some just one week from India or Brazil is changed. You see, this person is changed. And this person believes that everybody is admiring whatever is on their head. They have changed. Mm. Some just, they were unemployed. Now they have a job. Oh, that job 
They talk about it. No, you must understand. I must work out. I can't always be in church. No, it's, it's impossible. Mm, it's impossible. I have seen single ladies who loved God when they were single. The day they got married, they change. They change. Because all they wanted is a husband. They were humble because there was no husband. Now they have a husband. You don't see them in church. God is far away from them. In fact, they are the ones to tell their husbands, we are going to church too much. We must have our own private time. Not knowing that when you have a private time with a man and you are depriving him of meeting God, that man will leave you. It's a matter of time before he leaves you. Mm. How we change through the blessings of God. But a person who will stay in God or is a person who says, trust me, Lord. Anything that you bless me with, you know, I'll rush to your house. I will be there. You will find me in your house. That's the first place where you will find me. In your house and not outside. Once they are blessed, they are outside. They leave the house of God. Have you never seen people that were talented singing, they were humble, now God elevates them, they leave the church, they are singing now in the world. Yet it is God that lifted them up. Are you able to make a covenant with God to tell him, Lord, I know you are willing to bless me, but help me, Lord, not to leave you after blessing me. Because God may give you lots of money, lots of resources, and lots of influence. Don't change. I always tell my leaders, my leaders, tell me if you see a change in me towards the wrong direction. If you see any form of pride in me, just come in and say, you are not like this. Yeah. Please come in. I won't be offended. I will thank you for it. Because it's very easy for us all to change as we become so-called big. Mm. as people begin to tell you you are a big man oh people are very quick to tell you are a big woman or a big man you are highly influential you are the man of God for the hour you keep that in your mind you are dead with God yeah. he will take you apart I will forget apart mm. hey one man today said to me why are you driving a Mini Cooper instead of a Barabbas? I said, you don't know the things that I'm battling with on the inside. Let me deal with them myself. Aha. It could be that what you drive gets into your mind. You nothing. Some people just choose. Ah, they wear shoes. They think everybody. I mean, I hardly look at people's shoes. I don't even know what shoes you wear. But there are people that think that everybody is looking in their shoes. And therefore, they get proud because of their shoes. Mm. Some people, when they wear suits, mm. may I receive suits left, right, and center? So I really don't look at suits too much. Mm. When you look at people, they perceive they have money, they change. Some people come to church because they want a breakthrough. That's why when you come to God, don't look for his hand. Look for his face. When you look for his face, he will give you everything that you ever needed. Now, everything that you ever needed. I have seen men who find wives change. Mm -hmm. But I've seen many ladies who find husbands change. Ladies easily change when they find a husband. Hey, you have a boyfriend now, isn't it? I hope you don't change. Yeah, come here, come here. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. This lady, I found a cleaning chair, chairs, a uh, chairs here. I found you one day cleaning chairs. You didn't have that boyfriend when I talked to you. Aha. Uh -huh. I said, you remember, I said to her, she was there, somewhere there. I said, I hope you can find a good man by doing that. Yes. 
and how long from there did you find that good man? Two weeks. Uh, two weeks. <laughs> Sunday, she, she introduced me to the man. Mm. Yeah. Can you see? I just was touched when I saw a cleaning chair. She was so busy working and cleaning. I said, my God, he is someone. And I said, I hope you will find a good man. In two weeks, Sunday, this Sunday, she introduced me to the dude and said, this man. I thought she was joking. Mm. So the man loves you. Yes. Yeah, I said yes. to the man, marry the lady. Mm. You go far. <laughs> so, so right. I say it right. See, <laughs> I'm <laughs> But here's my point. Don't change. Amen. Ah, don't change. If you are still cleaning chairs, clean the chairs. Yeah, that's where your, your anointing is. Clean the chairs. Lean at your pose, aren't you? When God blesses you, you change for God. And therefore, it's not a remedy for Peck's life. You go further down. Say amen. amen. May you make such covenants like we all do. May I make many covenants with God. Lord, please, if you do this and that for me, this is what I do for you. If you do this and that for me, this is what I do for you. I made a covenant one time in a bank. In a bank. I said, Lord, I greeted that man. He didn't greet me back. If you give me, my church, you had 30 people. Between 30 and 50. I said, if you give me a big church, Lord, I will remember to talk to any small person and give them time. Amen. Do you know why I was late today? I was talking to someone who came to me and said, please, Bishop, I feel God directed me to you. Teach me how to start my church. It's a young couple. I discovered it's a young couple. Teach me how to start my church. They belong to a group in Quero that sings. Yeah? This group called what? Joyful Praise. Yeah. So I spent time with them. That's why I was late. I forgot. Mm. I forgot. I said, please, Bishop. I said, yeah, Molly, let them come in. Let me talk to them. I talked to them. I said, I want to start. I said, when I see you, I remember myself and my wife when we started. So I'm going to give you time. I'm going to be late a little bit, but I'm going to talk to you guys. So they were asking questions. How do we start? How do we start? Me? As they were living, the Spirit of God said, give them money. I don't know why God always talks to me about money. Give them money. I always, when God speaks to me, it's giving someone money. Always, always. And he said, almost daily for me, God says, give someone money. Anybody give someone. Someone had just walked in my office and they had no appointment. Uh, one of the pastors walked into my office, no appointment, and said, you know, I'm busy, I'm busy. But this person said, no, 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 Bishop, he's just coming in. God told me to come and give you money. So I accepted that man. That man moved. And then this young couple came in. And God said, that money that you get, God, it must go to this couple here. <laughs> so God will trust you with so much money if you are able to pass it and hear his voice. Uh -huh. So I passed it on. I noticed it. Oh, you're giving us money. We're supposed to give you. But when I gave them, they were crying. I said, you are broke, isn't it? They said, yes. I said, yes. They needed this money. Can you imagine? In coming to see me, they wanted to know about the ministry, but they needed money. They couldn't believe that a pastor could give them money. So before they left, I opened my wallet and, they came, and the man was crying. We bind you, Satan. We bind you. <laughs> Please. If you and I are going to be used by God in the ministry of receiving money and passing it on, it is when we can hear him. You hear him in many areas, but not in this area of money. Yet really money answereth all things. If you can hear God about giving someone money, you are gone. God will anoint you and give you much money. 
but when I uzo when uzo is easy to go pay ngapande we mal yet mal is the key thing. <laughs> Lift up your hands and say, Lord, use me as a warehouse, as a channel, as a vehicle to pass on resources to other people. Trust me, Lord, with much resources. And I will be able to pass them on. If God said, give your house now, what would you say? If God said, or a piece of land, pass your house to so and so. Forget pastor, forget to so and so. I want that house. I want, can you see that woman there? Give your house. How many? First of all, if if God to say it to you, can you pass your house to someone? Maybe you as a man may want to. What about your wife? <laughs> Because you claim God said. And the wife threatens you. And yet, in these days, if God must use us, we must be quick to hear such challenges from God. And therefore, challenges of passing large sums of money to somebody. Because when you follow God, the reaction is very simple. You give someone such a thing, you see how they break down. It is because they needed it more than you. But you sat with it. So for me, many years ago, I taught myself, anybody that I come across, Lord, do they have a need? A genuine, urgent need that I can meet. And if God says, yes, I'm ready for it. I'm ready. I'm ready to that challenge. And I meet that need. I'm a poor receiver myself. But I have taught myself to sow seeds in different people, especially the lowly people that won't give you back, that won't praise you, that won't help hold a microphone and say so and so gave me. You don't know them. Many preachers expect things to come to them. Mm -hmm. Right. If God said give someone money, can you do that? I want all of us to come and make a circle here. It won't be a circle. It will be an oval shape. Yeah. Like this. Let's make a circle here. Let me teach you some few lessons in life. Just a so the be oval place. See, we are seeing it's an overset. Yeah. So that we can accommodate many people, push that side with your overset. Push a little bit that side. Thank you, dear Christians. Thank you, dear brethren. We are closing now. That's why I'm making, we've been preaching for an hour. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to teach you to hear God. I learned to hear God many years ago, many, many years ago, to hear the voice of God, the inward voice of God. Many years ago, there's an audible voice of God that you may rarely hear, but there's an inward voice that God speaks always. If you don't learn and train yourself to be sensitive to this voice, you'll always grieve God. And God won't bless you with key things that you need in your life. But this inward voice, as I look at someone, what is this? What is this? What is it? And I obey it. Not that I have money, much money, no. Just to obey it from where I am changes someone's life. Many people get a breakthrough by one man, one woman who hears the voice of God. I have no doubt God has spoken to you, but you are always drowning the voice of God. In fact, you get angry when you hear that voice. 
Ah, no, 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 no. no. Ah, yes, it's born, uh, and yet, that could take someone over. That could be a key that will change someone's life. Did you know that the kingdom of God is so rich with stuff? The problem is, he relay low seven biscuits, says one billy, says advice, says out the ice cream, seven wood, casa fun who pass. The blessings of God are beautiful when you and I can pass them. You will find that there is no shortage at all in the economy of God. No shortage. He should have given you some more when you keep it in your hand, cool, cool pants. Um, I was good. Once you pass them on, there is more to come, and more to come, and more to come. How many people walk in the house of God thinking, "Oh my God, I have this need," and how many as well walk in the house of God and God says, "So and so is a need," and they refuse to meet that. Today you will hear the voice of God. Yeah. He will tell you if you ask him with a neutral voice. Don't fear your spouse. Don't fear your friends. Just long back we liberated each other with my wife that if I tell you that God has said this, support me. Yeah. So we support each other. She's given crazy stuff to people and uh, I don't interfere. Way by the time they think, <laughs> and say, go for it. You feel that way? Go for it. And I have done that. But together as well, we have given up normal things. Abnormal things towards God's way. Houses. Where we feel, okay, you feel we are right here? Yes. You feel so? Let's go for it. Boom, we go for it. It takes a lot of trusting God. Once you get over that line, I tell you that before you call, God will answer you. Just at times you think of a need and someone comes through and meets that need because he can now trust you and that you can meet needs in his kingdom. How many would like to live a life like that? <laughs> How many would like to be always sensitive and saying, possibly my brother has a need. Possib but make sure you listen here and not here. Because if you listen here, then you make, it, make a mistake here. And then when you do that, even all these needs that you have, you will be surprised. You will be surprised how people fight to bless you. How people fight to meet your needs. How people can queue to meet your needs. Do you think I had that need? And somebody has met it. I had that need. Somebody has met That's how the kingdom of God gets exciting. Now whisper to your neighbors. Move closer. Whisper these words to them. And say, oh, do I, own the child? Nah. I talk to them and say, Iwe, Iwe, Iwe. You are stingy. That's where your problem is. Right. I'm going to help you today. I can only teach you what I do. Don't teach people what you don't do. It won't work. Teach people what you do, what you practice. When you teach people what you practice, it works. They catch it. I practice this. That's why I am a liberty to teach it. Otherwise, I will not be qualified to teach this thing if I didn't live it. I sow seeds continuously and I've done that many times over my life. To the rich that I think they don't need it, but if I feel God said, give them, I give them. And the rich. To the poor, I do. I mean, you say, Kailu Sharundi, Kadini, the Bishop was a wing, he paid with descent. Hey, it's a boy, I don't worry. All right. How many want to practice to hear the voice of God now? Sure? You're all serious. Ask God as we close our eyes here. Ask God, is there anyone among us who has a need? Look, I don't like to do this, but uh, at times it may sound like I'm bragging, but uh, let me, I hope you can forgive me for saying this, and I hope you, you can forgive me as well. Who is, uh, I hope you can forgive me, Bob, come, come right here. I hope you can forgive me. 
I don't want to say this, but I want to help for this purpose of exercise. And you don't mind. All right. When I met this man and I drove with him in a car, God told him to give, for me to give him many of my clothes. Many. I don't know how many bags were, were they. They were how many bags? I didn't manage to count. You, you didn't manage to count them. Yeah, yeah, but the bags that you, that you carried, how many were they? Six or seven bags. Mm -hmm. yeah. So th there's much clothes there. So Some of them were brand new. Some of them were brand new. Yes, they were new. Uh -huh. yeah. I just, as I was driving, I felt to give him that. It was a compulsion in my spirit that I must give him. But when I drove with him to do witnessing, that was not my intention to do that. It wasn't my intention. But as I sat next to him, not that I looked anything, just inside my heart, God said, go and get as many things and plant in this man. So it was a Tuesday like this that I piled them and piled them. I even asked whether it's you to say, carry. Did you carry him? Uh, did you carry him with his stuff? Uh, yeah. So I'm sorry to say this, but I just want to show no, these people okay. that you can hear the voice of God. So I emptied literally my heart. I had suits that I had never worn. I just took them out. Shirts, I don't know how many, over 50 maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over 50. It was piles and piles and piles. But this came in because we witnessed being two, and God said, You have to do it. If I disobeyed, I'll be a miserable person today. I don't know what his needs were. I don't know. I don't claim to understand. But I suppose he understood. You cried a little bit. Yes, I did. You did. I did. Were you needing those things? Because I never asked you. Were, were you needing those things? Yes, I was. Why were you needing those things? I didn't have them. You didn't have them? Yes. Mm. So you felt that you really needed them. Yeah. So how did you feel? You felt God answered your prayer? I just said, thank you, Lord. Mm. The prayer answered. Aye. Mm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We appreciate it. Mm. But how many times do you sit with people? I've done this, by the way. I can call many people here. On a Sunday, and I will show you that, that, that. But it's just obeying. Some have given money. I specialize in giving money. Not that I'm rich. I just want to give. <laughs> yes, I did. So, so there you are. So if you and I live a life like that, we will change Christianity. Yeah, it won't be. A Christianity of shortage. Why is there a shortage today? Because some of us have, even if you don't have, when God gives you something, it may not be yours necessarily. He may be wanting to, like this pastor, came in exactly before this young couple came in. But he came in like to, for me to pray for him. I'm saying, this man has this and that and that. Why does he want me to pray for him? And I'm so busy. And I want to say, Molly, why do you ask? Allow people to come in when I'm so busy without appointments. But this guy really had come in to give me money. So that's what he had come to do. So after prayer, he gave me money. And then the moment I put it in my wallet, this young couple came in. I heard clearly, pass that money quickly. <laughs> it's not yours. You are just a bridge. These two don't know each other. Yeah. This pastor and this young couple, they don't know each other. They needed a bridge and you happen to be that bridge. Because you know them both, so I have passed it on to them, and therefore pass it on to them. Ah. And truly, my giving life is like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can't beat me in this game of giving. Now, I don't know what you have in your pocket or what you don't have. I don't know. But God, I'm not God. God will tell you yourself. Whether to give someone here or someone somewhere else in some other day, that's between you and God. But I'm going to ask God to speak to our lives now. Close your eyes now. Mm -hmm. And look inward. We are not really asking to receive here. We are asking to give. Remember, it's easier to ask to give, to receive. Yeah. Ask him. I say, Holy Spirit, help me. 
to bless someone today. And be specific, Lord, concerning that person. And I will be quick to obey you in the name of Jesus. Did you pray that prayer? Yeah, close your eyes and wait for God to speak to you. Mm. Wait for God to speak to you. You'll be specific about if it's money, if it's clothes, if it's shoes, if it's an item, if it's something. He will, once you get to know it, act on it, whether today or tomorrow or Sunday or next week or wherever you can. Mm. Once now, you are certain that you have heard him. I want you to lift up your hands. I want to ask you so that I know that at least God has spoken. I see, I see one, two. Okay, those that you are clear, come in the center here. You are clear about that. Hmm. Come in the center. Come in the center, yes. Because I tell you, the early church functioned in this. And it made the early church prosperous. We are many, yeah, just make it a line there. I see so many of you. Right. I wonder how we can test that this has worked here. Bring me that microphone. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's, let's test that. God spoke to you. The Holy Spirit spoke to you. About what? Giving mm. money. Giving money yes. to someone. Yes. Do you know there's some of money? Did he tell you the sum of money? No. But to give money to yes. someone. Thank you. What about you, Matthew? God didn't speak to me now, mm -hmm. but during the week. During the week. Yes. To give someone something. Yes. What is that something? Clothes. Clothes. Yes. Wow. Uh, is it a men's clothes or ladies' clothes? Yes. Ladies' clothes. Mm. Uh, he didn't speak to me now, yeah. but in the morning I gave someone school shoes. School, shoes, school shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, Mom, it's mm. clothes. It's clothes. To bless someone yes. clothes. Hey, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to do it. What about you? Mm. Uh, it's money. I already did it's, it. It's, it's money. To give person. someone money. Yeah. The person is here. Yeah, I already gave them. Oh, you already gave money. them money. Yeah. Hey, I wish I was sitting next to you to receive that money. Okay. And then, oh, what about you? It's money. It's uh, money. To, to, bless, works, yeah. to bless someone with money. Are they here or they're not here? No. They're not here. Mm. With what? Money. Money. They are here or they are not here? They are here. They are here. So you will pass it on. Okay. Mom? It's clothes, baby stuff, and money. Clothes and baby stuff. Do you know the person? Yes. Ah, good. Are they here? No, not here. Money, a bar of chocolate for one person, uh, and then an outfit for another person. Wow. They're money, a bar of chocolate, and outfit for they're one person. Here. Say, Paul. Um, money. Money. Yeah. Someone is here? Uh, no. No. Here. She's Lolo. Money. Yeah, someone is here. Yeah. Hey, those I told like man. And they'd say money. Money? Yeah. They are here? They are not here. They are not here. They owe someone money. They, they owe someone. They can't pay it. You oh, know they can't no, pay. They, 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 but they, God they. is telling you to bless them. Yeah. Can you see the economy of God working here? Uh huh. Okay. Money. Money. Yes. To someone. Yes. Are they here or not here? No, they're not they're here. They're not here. Yeah. Oh, tell you. Clothes and money. Clothes. And Clothes money. and money. The person is not here. Not here. Good. Yeah. Follow that. Mom? Um, I think the stuff in, my, in the garage. It's stuff in the garage? Yes. For someone? I don't know where to do. I'll you, just right, I ask God. He will direct yes. you. There is blessing in knowing the exact person. Yeah, okay. Because if you just give randomly, uh -huh. then you are missing the heart of God. Yeah. Okay. Ask God, Lord, who needs this? You'll be surprised. Yeah. Hey, clothes from in your garage. Yes, there's, yeah. too there's too much. Hey, too much. Hey, she. <laughs> 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 How now, Chujala? Next, you. Money and clothes for one young musician. Money and clothes for one young musician. Mm -hmm. And you? Uh, money to help my brother. Uh, money to help somebody. My brother. Your brother. Yes. Good. Uh, you, ma'am? Groceries for my sister. Uh, groceries for your sister. Hey, Bishop. Money and shoes. I don't know if you Oh, you, someone, you put it in their pocket. Oh, someone with a pocket. Thank you. You've given them money. Mm -hmm. uh, clothes. Clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you? Uh, money. Money. Are they here or they're not here? Between those two ladies. Between those two ladies there. Yeah. Those two. One, two. Yeah. 
Jesus. Whilst yeah. you're speaking, yeah. before you even mention the yeah. bishop, it was that lady. Which one? The one this side? Yes. Wearing blue she jeans. Singing, she was singing. Wearing blue jeans. Uh-huh. The one wearing a red skirt, maroon skirt. Yes. Hey, come, come but, here, ma'am. Hey. But then when you prayed. Come, come, come. This one. Yes. Yeah. Well, when you prayed, come and get your money from the dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, hey. I like that. <laughs> Give her the money while we are watching. In case you change your mind. This is God. Receive it. You owe him nothing. Nothing. Take the man. You owe him nothing. You owe God everything else. Yeah. Cut this thing up. Oh, we're done. Mm, we're done. Yeah. So that's how the economy, that's how God intended this kingdom to function. It stops functioning because of our greed, selfishness. Uh huh. If you live a life of hoping that everything comes to you, you will miss God. You will enter into a creed. And therefore, that's what false prophets do. But if you live a life of who can I bless, you will see how God blesses you. He will empower you in a supernatural way. And no one in his church will lack. Because I will come with an attitude, can I bless someone? Can I bless someone? And they are also wanting to bless someone. Guess what? Before we know it, the church is a powerful church of empowerment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Outside the circle, you will continue to ask God. Unless if God has spoken to you as well, and you are lifting up your hands and say, yeah, I want to be part of this circle. Did he speak to you? No. Okay. Anybody else? Outside the circle. But that's, oh, okay, come through. Come through. Come through. Come through the two of you. Oh, the three of you. I hope it's not Nigel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God spoke to you about what? Yeah, I should buy a Bible. You should buy a Bible yes, for then, someone. Yes, I don't know who the person is, but I'm supposed to meet them in evangelism. Yes, buy a Bible. Thank you. And you? Um, God spoke to me like two weeks ago mm-hmm. to give a lady whom I usually see by the street some groceries. Two weeks ago? You were still struggling to do it. Yeah, we had much And when? Mm-hmm. Um, there's someone in my neighborhood and a few people in my contacts that God has said, I want you to talk to them this week yeah. and check on them. And check and on them. Please do that. Mm-hmm. And yourself? Uh, it's a relative. It's uh, a relative. The name popped up that I'm supposed to buy them shoes. They buy them shoes. Next. Uh, it's a relative as well and uh, some two colleagues from the choir. Want and to give them two five. colleagues from the choir. I better join the choir before. <laughs> <laughs> and yourself? Uh, when we were preaching, uh, I just think about, um, I just thought about uh, my guy I stay with. The guys that you stay yeah, with? Yeah. That you need to bless yeah, them. You yeah. Can you notice this thing? This thing is not about giving the man of God. No. It's blessing each other. Can you see that? When you do that, then the kingdom of God functions effectively. So, whatever God has told you, please go and do it. It may be a miracle leading to a miracle. The thing that you have longed for that has eluded you is held up by whether it's a dollar, ten dollar, by obedience. It is not the amount. It is obedience that will change your life in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please, you can remain. Let's go back to our seats and and let's collect an offering today and go home. Mm. How many want to practice such a lifestyle? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sowing now. We are giving. Lift up your your hands as we as we give. We are talking of a lifestyle of giving. Let's let's do so today. Thank you so much. Hey, ships. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sisu, who else needs an envelope? Lift up your hand. We'll give you one. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? I see this side here. 
Thank you. There is no way that the kingdom of God must be broke. It is only broke because it's full of many selfish people. Yeah. That don't want to bless others. Thank you. Thank you. When you do that, God will bless you. You will be glad that you've taught yourself to be given. Could you write my envelope too? Yeah, thank you. I don't know those that are giving in. Is there a point now? The point is no longer functioning. Is that so? Is the point working now? It's not, it's not there, isn't it? Ah, okay. So you can't give in bond now. There is Zig, Zimbabwe cold, isn't it? Zimbabwe cold. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, say, if you've written my name there. Thank you. After giving, we're going to pray one prayer item that sums up, just one, that sums up this life of getting back to God, the remedy for backsliding. And that's one item, and then we can go home. Right, lift up your seed now as we pray. Declare with me, this is my seed. I'm planting it, expectant of a harvest coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, let's give now if you've taken time to write. I had many prayer items here, but I have abandoned them. I felt just to zero in on this very thing that we have done here today. Please stand as we have this one item in prayer. And then it will be okay. The one item is simple this. For you and I to be able to hear the voice of God. In particular, the inward voice of God. To hear that is one thing. To obey it is another. So to hear and obey the voice of God. One of these days I'm going to as an appetizer to preach about how to hear the voice of God. How you and I can hear the voice of God. I will teach about it in one of these Sundays before, the, before our declaration. So can I ask you please to pray for that. Let's pray. Father, teach us to hear your voice. Teach us to hear your voice so clearly. Your inward voice. Not only hear it, but obey it. We understand that your kingdom is enhanced or suffers because of our hearing lies. We want to be those that we hear clearly, so clearly and obey. That as we obey, Lord, you open many avenues of blessings in our lives. To hear your voice, step out, and then obey that which you speak to us about. We are those, Lord, that want to obey like children in our homes that will obey parents, we want to be able to obey you. Many things in the kingdom of God are at standstill because those who have been asked to do certain things have failed to do so. But help us, Lord. Help us speak to us, even in our homes. Speak to us even as we drive. Speak to us even in our workplaces concerning this matter that will change your kingdom, that will empower others, that will bring joy and release, that will cause the economy of God to function in its perfection. 
because we have obeyed. There are many today, Lord, that are starving. There are many today whose visions are stifled because others have disobeyed. There are many today that are in want. There are many today that go to bed without because we have failed to obey your voice. Teach us, Lord, to obey your voice and teach us to know your voice and step out in faith and in great obedience to that which you are talking to us about. Father, we are repenting in the past where we have failed, where we have stifled your voice, where we have been disobedient to that still small voice on the inside of us. May we be quick, Lord, to listen. May we be quick to act. May we be quick to obey so that, Lord, we may see your hand greatly, mightily resting upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Teach us, Lord, as a group today, may this lesson, Lord, be learned by many others, Lord, that are not here, that together we will obey you in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen and amen. You notice this. God will start with these small things. Eventually, as you obey him, he will trust you as a warehouse. Therefore, that means the blessings that come to you are in proportion to the way you obey him when he says give. That's how you begin to receive bigger stuff. Bigger stuff. I obeyed recently, like I told you, when God said, take this money. Go and see that man and give him that money. He needs it. Okay. I did not know that by taking that money, uh, that man had 100,000 US dollars for me to give to me. Yeah. I just obeyed. I felt that I must obey that. So I went with a mind of blessing him. I didn't know that his blessing was far, far bigger than what he was carrying. If I had not lent over time to obey that voice, I would have missed those resources. Aha! Can you see? I did not ask him. I wanted to bless him. I felt good to bless him. But when I said I want, he says, stop. This is what I want to do. He took my money, but he gave me. <laughs> Can you see this? This is played up continuously in men and women of God that listen. Yeah. Your blessing may be in someone as you go in there. It could be that person or someone else that says, God says, yeah, you have obeyed this small commandment. I will now ask that person to come to you and bless you. I tell you, I can sit here and tell you testimony after test. But I will not teach you this if it didn't work. It works. But it brings joy to someone who is desperate when you hear God and unlock their situation and bless them. Please make sure you live that lifestyle. It will unlock many things in your life. May God bless you. We see you on Saturday evangelism as well as on Sunday church. I don't think we have any other announcements here. May God bless you.